We have new information on that manhunt. They now have surveillance video of Michael Burham, uh, put up his picture, uh, the man who's suspected of raping and murdering the mother of his kid. Uh, he's considered armed and dangerous, and now they're even more worried about him, even though you would think it's a good thing that he's out of the woods and they see him walking down the street and with a limp, apparently. Um, but it's made police even more concerned, okay? Uh, this was in Warren, Pennsylvania, okay? That's where he was seen uh, a few days ago. Tape was stamped at around 5 a.m., so, of course, that's a lot of time for him to be somewhere else, uh, maybe even to be better. Who knows what happened to him? But he wasn't wearing the prison garb, and that really leads to the big question is, is he doing this alone, all right, in these past eight days that he escaped? Let's bring in former FBI agent, News Nation Law and Justice contributor, Jennifer Coffin Daffer. Um, so, first is, uh, okay, he's not in the woods, but, but the police are like, oh, if he's hurt, and he's in, in uh, you know, a populated area, it's even more of a concern. Why? Well, that's right. We've got the good news and the bad news are the same. He's out of the woods, but it's not good from the standpoint of now citizenry are possibly going to be subject to him doing some crime against them. We've seen it before in other fugitives that escape. They go into a house. They think nobody's there. They hold up shop and then somebody comes in and they've murdered them. So it's a very it's a situation now where he's in the public. I'm assuming they did things with this video that we can't that let them think that, you know, it even has a shot of being this guy, uh, especially if he's not in the prison clothes anymore. My concern or question is it's three days ago. Now, to me, that feels like it's a lifetime that he could be in a different state by now. But how do police see that period in this context? Well, they're just happy that they've got a breadcrumb here. They've seen him, and you can see him walk off. They're going to look at other ring cameras and other camera footage that is in this area. It looks residential to me. I see picket fences. It was supposedly uh, tendered by a resident. So I think it's going to help them with an initial breadcrumb, even if it's three days ago. What happened after that? He's banged up and out of the woods, so, you know, he's not the uh, survivalist slash MacGyver. Uh, you know, in terms of him being able to do it without incident. So we'll see how that helps. Now, the, the big question is, you got a better chance of finding him through somebody else. Why do you feel so strongly he has to be getting help? He's got to be getting help. Look, we saw the procurements that he had in these campsites that they found. Where did those come from? That was somebody bringing them to him. His clothing that he has, somebody had to give that to him. Law enforcement believes he has a gun, and they've told the public that. That means somebody had to get that for him. So we know he's getting help. Who it is, I think you it's know, going to be a little bit of an outlier, somebody that's not close to him necessarily. Why? Well, I think that because they haven't found who's helping him yet. They're going to start with his closest inner circle of friends and family and work out from there. It just seems like this might be somebody that's a little bit of an outlier from the people you would expect to be helping him. Or, Coffin Daffer, I'm going to say something that's very Coffin Daffer-esque, mm -hmm. or... Maybe they have found who's helping him and they are not making them aware so that they can see if they lead him to this guy. You know what? I like how you think. I think that is a possibility. But right? we'll see. I think it is a possibility. What I do think is they're definitely monitoring the phones of everyone that is closely associated with him. That's just a mm. given. Could they have more? Yes. But we're on day eight, Chris. That's a, that's, yeah. you know, we're really getting on the outside of things. And again, if he has help, he could be long gone from where this video was taken. Mm. You know, you see that story that came out where uh, one of the people involved uh, with running the jail said, oh, he was like a jungle cat. You know, he was like a panther the way he was able to climb <laughs> up and find his way out. They're trying to come up with a CYA story for how they lost, who had to be the most dangerous guy in the house, and they didn't even know until the next morning. Right. They said it happened in seconds. But then there was also a caveat, they said, and they said they weren't going to be on a witch hunt, but they were going to make sure that the people who were responsible were held accountable. So to me, there's some very serious breaches 
albeit not on purpose probably, that happened for this inmate to escape like this. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.